Thank you so much for being here today. We managed to schedule the artist talk on yet another rainy day. So I hope you're all cozied up and you have some tea or some wine, whatever is relaxing. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> What's in, what you got in your cup, Preston? <laughs> okay. <laughs> A uh, let's, yes. <laughs> My name is Tamora Wright. I'm the visual arts exhibition manager at Glen Echo Park and I help run the partnership galleries. I will be moderating the artist talk with Preston Sampson, who currently has a show up at Glen Echo Park called Respite, which runs from October 10th to November 15th. Um, our galleries are open Saturdays and Sundays, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. This weekend is the last weekend to see the show. So if you haven't been yet, please visit. It's an incredible show. Um, please make sure to turn your videos and mic off. Uh, feel free to leave questions and comments in the chat. Um, so without further ado, let's welcome Preston Sampson. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm so glad to be here. Yes. It's a um, beautiful, rainy Thursday night. Yes, definitely. Um, I just want to preface the conversation by saying that me and Preston go back. Um, this is the second time that we've worked together on an exhibit, and um, I've been a big fan of his work um, as his gestural style and the way he captures movement and brings his subjects to life are tr truly inspiring, and I really enjoy uh, receiving his work very much. Um, so we are going to dive in. Could you give me um, just a brief background about you know yourself as an artist and how you came about studying art and and just your whole background absolutely i just like first to start out by saying it is i'm also a big fan of yours as well and uh you've done great work in our community making sure that artists uh, oftentimes very underserved artists are getting their voice out and um you know highlighting uh of a diverse body of work you know that you've been doing over the years since i've known you it seemed like you were like a baby when i first met you <laughs> it wasn't that long like ago it. Uh, no, it wasn't. But really yeah it was but you two probably... years ago but it seems like decades that's wow. why i'm like we go way back <laughs> i know that's right yeah that was eight three, yeah but no but again but thank you and, and and i'm really honored to have been part of the show with glenn echo um and i've got a lot to say so you know you can always pm me on the screen here to shut me up if i start going too long Okay. Now, okay, so you want to ask me about me and my approach and how that, what, what do you want to know again? You know, let me take it one by one. Could you give us a background about yourself and your practice? Um, okay. Talk about how you developed as an artist, starting off your experience, education to oh. now. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm from Florida, from West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, and I would have to say the earliest root of me uh, working and becoming an artist was being in a household full of people who painted, drew, uh, played instruments, uh, wrote stories. Uh, all of my sisters are very diverse and interesting people from a flute player to uh, a screenwriter, journalist, uh, and another sister who's just brilliant. And, and uh, my father was a musician in the early part of his life. So creativity was always just a part of the household. And uh, it's so funny when I would uh, got to college, people would uh, meet me and ask, how did your parents let you major in art? I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, man, you, I guess what we were always taught and uh, was a currency that we had was a cultural, you know, and it was a responsibility, not what you had, but what could you do? You know, what, what could you contribute? And, um, and oddly enough, out of all of the siblings, I was probably the least talented of all of them because they could all draw. Like my father used to teach me how to draw like eyes and different, different any number of things, you know. So it was it was a household. So as far as background, yeah, I would say that that had uh, you know, my family, that the house where I grew up had much to do with uh where I ended up. And um also then having, you know, going through the journey, uh going through high school and drawing, going to the University of Maryland. I, I was blessed and fortunate to be able to go to school there under, um, you know, Dr. Driscoll. David Driscoll was uh, a key, because yeah, we talked to him at, at Prince George's 
uh, New Zealand. He came to your yeah. show. Yeah. He did. And, uh, our artist talk back then. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Dr. D was, uh, you know, quite a mentor for me. Also, Sam Gilliam, you know, was there. He was uh, there. Um, uh, Keith Morrison um, goes on and on. Uh, Pat Craig, who was one of my um, professors who really spent a lot of time with me. Uh, Chip Richardson, who's now the, the chairman. They were on and on. Jerome Meadows. There were uh, quite a few people in the um, at University of Maryland. It really started to inform what I would go on to do. Um, and one of my favorite stories was um, being in Maryland and asking Dr. Driscoll in, in a class, art history class, he was showing us pictures of Horace Pippen and uh, William H. Johnson. I'm like, that's the ugliest thing I've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, are you serious? He said, you got to be stupid. <laughs> he said, I'm going to work with you, boy. You know, I mean, he, but I didn't know. I was a 19 year old kid from Florida. And I thought my idea of art was Caravaggio mm -hmm. and Michelangelo, this beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, and I was never that good of a draftsman. So, I mean, I could never draw like that. There were people who could draw circles around me. Uh, but I think the key part about my education in Maryland was uh, Dr. Driscoll telling me it's not about what how you do, what you do is how you do it and who you are and how do you interject yourself, your narrative, your personal narrative. What do you think and what you think is just as important as anybody else? And it's just if you how committed are you going to be to um, keeping you know sticking to your message. And uh, one thing I think that I've always done is stuck to my message, you know, right or wrong. I mean, who knows that uh, people like it, some don't, you know, I, whatever, it's not my problem. I'm me, I'm gonna do me. And I've been doing me for a long time. You know, as a matter of fact, the first, uh, <laughs> remember I told you about the long winded thing, so you may have to like throw the flag. No, it's okay. <laughs> but anyway, so I was gonna say the first painting I ever did at University of Maryland was a little painting of my grandfather. You know, the one and people who know my work uh, know this piece called They Built a Nation. There's a, there's a picture we had in our den growing up. It was this uh, sepia tone, small, maybe five by seven photograph of these three black men that look like cowboys. One of them had a big wop-sided hat and big doe eyes. And I looked at this thing my whole life and said, man, it's a beautiful picture. And I just imagined the stories and who these people were and I, you know, and it, as I got older, I realized that was my father's father. That was my granddaddy, who I never, never um, met. And then later on, subsequently, I mean, only maybe three, four years later, like now, like from today's date, that I learned that my grandfather's father was lynched in northern Georgia. Yeah, Morris, who my sister Joyce, who's the great genealogist of the family, who it digs into all of the history and everything. And, I mean, she's amazing, and, but she's uh, um, taught me quite a bit about things that I didn't know about how, um, you know, he was a registrar of voters, you know, in whatever county that was in up in Northern Florida. So I've always thought of him as being kind of my muse, you know, and the person and they did. Every time I start doing a body of work, or, or, you know, I've always done a lot of mediums. I, I'm I'm interested right. in anything from drawing, painting, uh, crayons, and caustic, like, well, whatever, you know, glass, you name it, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it goes back to even being a kid, <laughs> they would, I would make these little toothpick houses, you know, and different things and football stadiums, you know. So, so, Kid with too much time on his hands, you know. Right, anything so, that you could do with your hands. Yeah, hand, yeah. Yes. exactly. So it, you mm -hmm. know, it, I would always make something up because we didn't have any money. You know, there weren't toys and all this other stuff that you could buy. Some it was, hey, go figure it out. Go make. Mm -hmm. it. See, you probably even too young to know about making the. Well, just a little bit. I, I tell oh, my daughter all the time. I'm like, go find something to play with, and it's very hard for her. She has yeah. all these toys, but she wants to watch uh youtube and we didn't even have tv yeah. <laughs> it wasn't no tv tv got two channels channel right. five and channel seven and nothing was on <laughs> so <laughs> but we um yeah so there was a, a thing about doing something in, in my family in my house it was all you had to do something you know my father right. wasn't accepting just 
You know, I wanted to play ball and sports and I stunk, you know, and he knew it even way back then. So, you know, he'd say, hey, what you <laughs> do something that you can really do for the rest of your life, you know. Right, so, right. And you um, found something. Mm -hmm. So, You're uh, let me see. So. Yeah. Um, so when we first talked about doing a show at Glen Echo, I know you wanted to do a show that depicted Black lives from the Jim Crow era to now because of the park's civil rights history of racial, racial segregation and the protests. Um, uh, hold on. Uh -oh. There we go. Okay. Um, and then we did a studio visit in August and looked through your work to discuss a theme. And I feel like your heart spoke and you really wanted to present a body of work that provided solace and comfort during these tense times in our society. Um, could you talk more about this? Absolutely. Because like I said, we did. When, when we came and talked, you know, my initial, when I started looking at the, um, at the history of Glen Echo, the first thing that stood out to me was, uh, you know, the how they were part of this uh, civil rights movement with the students from Howard uh, protesting them, because of course, like everything else, black folks couldn't go to um, go to Glen Echo. So I thought about, you know, and I've been doing this project on black males uh, that I'm doing called Black Male Duh. You know, and it's, you know, it's kind of narratives of, of the black man of being this scary, dangerous person, you know, we, which is ridiculous. But, um, you know, what I was going to do, I, you know, you came to the studio, you see, I do like really big work, you know, I've, I've like scaled and, um, you know, it did, and, but the work was really heavy. And first of all, when I came to see the space and I'm like, I can't show that here. It was, it'd be overwhelming, there'd be no place. Cause I had a one piece, it was eight foot by eight foot that I wanted to show. There's no place to even show that there. You know, it wouldn't, it would not have worked. And so, but then we kind of, you know, we signed a contract, we agreed to do it. That was last year, way back. And there's right. so much stuff that happened between then and the beginning of the year. Yes. I kind of sort of forgot Holy about world. it. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about it. You know, it got more, you know, and so when the pandemic first started, you know, it was really difficult uh, for me. It was, it was difficult for everybody. It was a foreboding, you know, really heavy, uncomfortable, uneasy, tense. Every negative adjective I can think of, it was that's where we were as a country. And we, I think it's the sun's breaking a little bit now, but still you know, it was a heaviness really really heavy and i couldn't do anything and one of my good friends who's in tampa you know i was we were talking and i'm like man i just i don't know i can't i'm paralyzed i can't do anything he said bro you got all you need you got paintbrush you got paint canvas paint and i'm like but i don't feel like it he said whatever paint i started painting and i started painting <laughs> and i started painting and then after a while, it was gone. I mean, off to the races. And uh, there were, you know, some political stuff. Like, I'm looking at the one now that, you know, people ask me, that was one of the Central Park Five guys, uh, you know, with the NYCPD. You know, that's one. It, it, and it was a lot of it was in response to the, the, the leadership of this country and where Black men have found themselves. You know, where we always are. I mean, this is, this is nothing different. Right. This is same as same as it ever was. Like, remember? You know, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, you know. Right. Yeah. So I'm just like, man, I, I can go on and on with this. I've got a whole body of works of these, you know. But by the same token, I drew on some of the things that that I remembered, some of the fun things, you know, some of the the uh, the life, the beauty, you know, life's simple pleasures, uh, you know, and it's. <laughs> It, it, you know, and, and the piece that's on the left here, you know, the wedding dance, well, two of my friends, I love them to death. Uh, they got married and I saw they had a picture on Facebook. Uh, like, I don't know how long they've been married now, but she had it on there. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm gonna paint y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna get, that was the greatest photo I've ever seen. And 
so I did some pulp painting. You know I'm saying, and I said, no use. I'm not trying to recreate this photograph, but it was just the energy and the love with these two people, and you know how, and I love both of them to death, you know. So I, this was my opportunity to do that, you know, because um, I, uh, yeah, it, it was different, it was, it, and it was brought me joy. It, it brought me. Um, some of the memories and things of things that we lost, you know, basic things, you know, uh, putting on clothes. How about that? I and mean, right. how many people forget, you know, didn't, absolutely, you know, hey, yeah. well, I can't say this on that, but you know, I'm just saying I've changed my clothes like during the beginning of it. I mean, everybody was stunned. I, I probably didn't change like one day, about five days in a row, like whatever, who cares? When we're just in the house. Yeah, forgot what day right. it was. You didn't go nowhere. They wouldn't even go to the grocery store. What is time? <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it didn't matter. So, but you know, but I, I just some of these things and some of these beautiful things, beautiful women. You know, uh, uh, yeah. You know, I'm I'm a big um, band. I'm a, you know, I got grew up in a band family. You know, um, you know, because my you know my father just a musician. My sister was a big band person, and I grew up with the drum. Mm -hmm. You know, the the marching band, the cadence you know uh and all of that so a lot of times i do look at these i, I miss that I just go to right. State just to see the band i go to howard i went to university yes. of maryland but i want to go see howard's band of course that's <laughs> where howard, it's at yeah yes. the hbc bands what's, what's dancing, it's, so, it's mm -hmm. definitely a, a cultural gathering and brings people together and so when you think about you know globally our current political and social societal issues ha that have been at the forefront of the art world, mm -hmm. you kind of want to get away from these topics. So what do you think of? Are they are they your memories or the things that you see that you want to paint? Um, what inspires you to kind of turn away from those things and focus on, you know, the, the good things in life, our experiences and you know the people that we're with and even finding you know solace within ourselves and enjoying everyday life mm -hmm. well you know if you listen to my sisters and even some of my friends they'll always say man you you remember everything don't you just like the elephant <laughs> and i do i i you know I, I i swear i remember when jfk got shot you know i was like and i kind of sort of do i was three years old you know going on but um i don't really remember but I have a certain things that are indelibly etched into your mind, you know, and they're things that, uh, you know, memories there are things that are spurned, you know, you know, things that you see. I, I believe that we all are um, a part of our environment. The environment that is around you is the information. I like this piece here. This is me and my wife on vacation in Turks and Caicos last year. I, you know, took a picture of her and, you know, it was just, and I thought this was like so fitting because nobody went on vacation. I wanted to go to the beach so bad, you know, like, <laughs> like this summer, but there were well, no, no beach. Me too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and I also realized looking at this piece, the empty chairs, you know, the, the solitude, the aloneness, we spent a lot of time by ourselves and during this period. And I think that was, that was something that I really felt, you know, with individual, you know, like snapshots of individuals, you know, their their, their memories of things that uh, I remember her sitting on that that, that uh, long, you know, chair, beach chair, out there looking at beautiful water, you know, turquoise. Water. And I wish so bad I could have got there. I wish I didn't get there at all this year. No beach for me. And, you know. <laughs> 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 that's a little next whistle, year. you know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's what I, you know, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to see, you know. Um, <laughs> I understand. I, you know, just the things that we're missing, you know, things that we have missed, you know. Um, yeah. You know, the, you know, just life, you know. Because one last time you went to the, the lounge and, you know, listen to music and had drinks and, you know, and just enjoyed yourself, you know, let your head on. That doesn't happen. That's not oh. a part of, you know, that's not the really reality that we're living in. Um, I think the last time was maybe some public gathering where it was like outside and people were spread out and, you know, live music. Um, I, I listened to some jazz 
in yeah. the summer, but it's definitely been a while. That's no fun. Wow. You know, you need to step on somebody's shoes, you know, and get drinks spilled mm -hmm. on. Bump elbows. <laughs> definitely, I understand. Um, so I really want to know more about the subjects in your work and who these people are and what they mean to you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, very often there may be people that I've seen, people that I know, things that I see, you know, on TV, on the internet, on wherever the image comes through or uh, something that somebody I saw, you know, um, and some of them are absolutely, like I said, they're, they're memories and they're exercises. Um, and uh, what, you know, like the piece on the left here, I always thought that's called American Gothic. And that, that started out just like as a piece of cloth, you know, it was a textile thing. I had no idea what was going to happen with that. And, um, uh, you know, these two kind of happened in there. And I'm like, wait a minute, but they look like really young and, you know, urbane and hell. And that couch looks like it's from your grandmama's house. Right. <laughs> you know, yes. and so it just kind of morphed and they murdered and a little guy peeking around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other one was a, a pulp painting. It's just, um, and we're going to talk about that, I know, a little later uh, in the discussion, but. You know, there's something that, that I want to deal with about her. I've always thought that metaphorically the neck and especially for black people has a lot of personal significance to me. And maybe it goes back to something so much as, you know, you see a swan is, is tall and regal. They, they, they've got this exaggerated, you know, this, this presence, you know, uh, and that's what it kind of means to me. Um, it also means, like I said, regal. Remember the old, um, I don't know if it's Benin or one, one of the African cult where they- Yes, and they have the yeah, necklaces, yeah. yeah. I, that's yeah. always yeah. just broke me, you know? And as, and then when I saw, um, you know, as a younger, uh, you know, student, Medigliani and some of those people, you know, the, this exaggeration, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and then just, they, it's like they're sitting on a perch. And also, too, you know, with our men and, and women, too. I'm not going to play them down, but, you know, sometimes that, I mean, we've all been victims of having our neck used for the wrong way. Right. You know? So uh, that's another, you know, a subtle kind of, um, you know, subliminal thing for, for me. It, it's a kind of double edged sword with, with the necks uh, for me. And, uh, and 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 I know we're also going to talk about portraiture, but see, it's something I just love drawing and painting beautiful women. <laughs> I mean, of you know, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, you know what I mean. So it's yeah. just um, there's a storehouse mm -hmm. of image, the image bank in my head. You know, it, there's not a day that goes by that I don't see something, mm -hmm. whether it's on TV. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll see something. It could be anything. Than the, paint. Right. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, what was what was that? And it it just spurs something, you know, makes me think of something. And sometimes I just take a picture, you know, freeze frame it on the TV or wherever. If I see somebody in the street, you know, that I think is interesting, which is a little difficult now because you know y'all don't like getting your picture taken unauthorized, you know. So right, and it was right. a little different, but there used to be a time now I had no problem. Mm -hmm. There was no shame in my game with snapping unauthorized <laughs> you, know, but, you know but now you, you, know, you have to definitely be subtle yeah you have to be and i got to, you know i got all kind of like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but, funny. So, yeah, yeah but no but anyway with subjects you know and, and sometimes like the one to the right here reminds me of my mother mm -hmm. you know um and 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 i used to, i've been told like on times that all my women look alike mm -hmm. that all of my men look alike. i'm like well they kind of they have, like, a, they have a Dorothy Dandridge about them, I have to say. Like my mom. Or an Alina Horn. Absolutely. You know? Like my aunt B. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, it. yeah. They, they didn't call her the honeybee. Hey, they didn't call her the honeybee for nothing. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she was a mess. But I'm just saying she was also, you know, I mean, the, the women in my life have always been mm -hmm. extra. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, I know all about that. <laughs> yeah, I know you do, yeah. <laughs> so um, your gestural style reminds me of Elaine de Kooning. Um, and for others who might not be familiar with her work, she's an American uh, 
painter, abstract expressionist known for her expressive gestures and her portraits. Can you tell me more about the freedom you get from this abstract style and how the movement in your pieces connect to the people that you paint? Yeah, um, I, I will take that. I will take that back and rewind it a little bit to college. You know, when I said, you know, I went to University of Maryland and largely studied under abstract painters and teachers who were abstract. You know, it was not a formal school of painting like Philadelphia right. where right. the form and, you know, technical classical. Painting, classical. And I also found out very quickly I wasn't that good. You know, I couldn't paint classical. No, no. I mean, I'm not, you know, to me, always the thing that killed me is bad realism. <laughs> bad realism is the worst thing I've ever seen. I said, if you can't do it, don't try it. You know, do something else. You know, it's not, it's not for everyone, right? Yeah, that's not for you. Yeah, I can't do right. it. Yeah, and and not, not only that, direction. but the work that always turned me on, I still have a paper uh, that I kept. I didn't even get a good grade on this, but I, it, I just stuck in my a thing that I had from college. I still have to this day. And I wrote a paper about that guy, Edgar Degas about you know the uh unnaturalistic colors and this and that and you know and the teacher wrote back on it professor like well this was theater stage lighting and so of course they were green and blue but i always loved the guys dances and the impressionist and uh so that stuck with me that stuck with me but also it stuck with me when i started under dr driscoll learning about horace pippen and I started learning about, um, you know, Jacob Lawrence and his stylizations and how you portray the thing. But I always, what I love the most, and every artist is informed by something else that's come before them. And what came before me was the Ashcan guys, Reginald Marsh. Um, you know, I love, uh, what's my man's name? Uh, uh, not hopping that high. Um, geez, I can't think of it right now, but uh, it, it'll come to me in a minute. But, you know, I, I like the, the expressionism and the uh, uh, colors and, and movement. I, you know, to me, I believe that what I'm trying to, uh, you know, communicate with my palette and my colors and my work is, you know, moment, you know, because, I, you know, it's not everything. I always feel like, hey, do the work yourself. You know, it's, um, it, it, I'm not going to put in everything for you. This is what I got. And, and what's so, what I think personally, if I can say what interests me about my own work, mm -hmm. is it never stops surprising me. You know, I think yeah. that, um, you know, what I think I see, the longer I look at my work and study it, it changes or something else. And it, it does different things at different times. So, and I that's that too. It's mo it's because it's moving to me. That's sure. why I'm so um, captivated by your work is because it's the your brush strokes and your hand is I can see is moving and kind of dancing. And so your work is like a, a breathing moment, even though it's like capturing one moment. It's happen happening, and these people are, you know, alive and. I think it's fantastic. And it's like PED too, you know, attention deficit. You know, I, I don't have patience. <laughs> you know, ah. like I want to get them, you know, get to the point. And I tend to be a little impatient in my mm -hmm. life in general. That, uh, hey, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, you know, you see, you know, you know. And it's kind of like with my work too. Okay, hey, look, that's there. But come on, I mean, you know what I'm talking about? You remember back that thing then? Back, you know, and it's and that is kind of sort of my 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 uh rhythm and um you know how i process my painting you know moving through it but yeah no trust me and i'll tell you just to, to the elaine de coon and we talked about this before when we went to see the presidential portrait you know right. that obama's right here which is off the chain you know all of these old gray white men you know all up and down this hall brown ochre gray and even before i got to obama there's the coon and jfk over there and i'm like that's right there yeah and see and my wife who's not even you know an art person all, she said that looks like you she said i like you know first she said i like that that's my favorite portrait i said well me too mm -hmm. and she said yeah because it reminds me of your work and i'm like yeah me too mm -hmm. but that's how I that's I my agree. thing it's, I, I think that to me <laughs> some of the story of painting should include like your life the imperfection the mistake 
to what you tried to do, what didn't, but you changed your mind. There you drop the brush on it, you know, something else. And it just, it's, it's, it's all of this serendipity and then stuff that it happens. It comes out as you process in your work. It's not a, a, a you know, one of my favorite groups, Funkadelic. You're too young to know about Funkadelic, aren't you? I still know who that is. With George Clinton. Okay. Yes, yeah, of mother, course. Mother, father, mom. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they did Maggot Brain in one sitting on acid. Wow. That they just did it. It was one take, a raw take. And I say the raw take is the best take. You can practice it, you can clean it up, it can be crisp, but whatever. You know, it was like I said, growing up around musicians, the thing that I always like the most, I love the most, more than the concert, is the tune up, the pregame. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're tuning their instruments and mm -hmm. jamming, practicing, and, you know, and practicing. I used messing to around. With, yeah, I used to hang out with this brother who yes. uh, uh, he had a, a Christian rock group. Uh, Philando will can smoke more reefer than anybody in, on earth, but he was like, and I would go down and hang out with them in the basement, and they would be, I mean, they would be killing it, and then go into this Christian rock, which was funny, <laughs> everybody in there high, but you know, it was, um, it, it, but that that was that was beautiful, and seeing him in the band room at Roosevelt High School, you know, seeing him tune up the instruments, so, you know. So anyway, I, I think my work is a constant state of tuning up. Yes. You know, it is, it's yeah. tuning up. And I hear questions sometimes with people who don't really know my work is, is it finished? I'm like, oh, yeah, well, trust me, it's finished. It's done. Yep. If it's out here for you, it's done. Now, you that know, you mean. know, yeah. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and if it's not, hey, who knows? But if it comes back to me, you never know. Mm -hmm. I might put it in the in the mixer one more time and see what happens, yeah, you know? So it's a process, it's always a process, in process too. So you've been exploring a new medium called pulp painting. Mm. Can you tell us more about pulp painting and how you began practicing this style? Yeah, um, pulp painting. I first started doing pulp painting in probably 1997. I think it was 1997. I went to... Um, uh, Pyramid Atlantic, uh, the place here in in this in Riverdale and in Brentwood now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had a grant to do a piece for Duke Ellington's uh, 100th year centennial, which was going to be in 1999. Mm -hmm. So it was from Prince George's Arts Council. So I went to Pyramid. I was excited. I was like a a, a, a rube right off the turnip truck. I go up here to Pyramid with my patches on my pants. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to do some monotype. I was working with my friend who's become my dear friend, Susan Goldman, uh, Lily Press. Uh, but she was over there working with Pyramid and I got there and they weren't ready for me. I came on the wrong week. I was supposed to come the next week, but I was there. So they said, well, your time's paid for So while you're here, why don't you go over there and try that? Yeah. And I went over there with the woman who was doing it, Nicole. She, um, it was this squirt ball. It's a mess. It was like, what it is? It is, it's popes. It is, um, and I've been corrected that they don't call it handmade paper. It's artist made paper. You know, whatever's different. Because but, it is, uh, yeah. Yeah, but so you you're making a sheet of of a paper, and then what it is, you've got other uh, containers of. Um, pulp, which is, you know, refined, you know, uh, recycled cotton, abaca, canvas, it's finally ground up. And what I tell people is it's kind of like the consistency of wet toilet paper and a little in water and water <laughs> and a little egg yolk. It's, you know, it's, nah, it runs all over. It's the lovely. Place. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can like oh, feel the texture of my hand now, like. <laughs> I know. Oh, you can see how it smells too, though. You oh, should no. see the smell. The smell is Outrageous, but anyway, <laughs> but, but you know it. Um, so what it is, what you're doing is you 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 uh having a substrate is a, a you're working flat because it's in a mold, the paper mold, and it comes in any number of uh applications that you can do. You can take it with your hands and pour it out and spread it around. You can use a brush. Uh, you can use like the little ketchup squirt bottles that yeah. uh 
you know, to make like, because see some of the things I, I really am interested in always with my work is line, line work, the linear, uh, you know, some of the yellow lines here and the, the thing and going all around. There are different ways to create these lines and things. So I did these pieces, but what happens? You run it, you, you build your um, image base, whatever that may be. Most people that I'm familiar with who do the process are abstract painters. Mm -hmm. And if I haven't already said it, I'm still kind of basically a pseudo abstract painter, you know, pseudo, but I but with, with within the context of figures, yeah. uh, putting them together. So it's kind of the both things all working together in concert. Mm -hmm. But um what happens is when you're doing these things, when you are, you know, building your layers, when it comes time to, uh, it has to go, it's very wet, it's soaking wet. So when it goes through the press to squeeze out, you know, the excess water in it, you may have had this beautiful thing you thought that was just perfect. And the was Question. And it's this, wow. and you're like, but then I was like, wow. So the first time, I, that was 1997. Wow. First time I showed them, I was like, this is a mess. I'm not I'm showing nobody this. I mean, it was so undefined and abstract. Man, please. It has, they have done wonderful things, you know, and I've really enjoyed that. And I think that, again, some of the, the surprise of it is the thing that I really enjoy uh, the most. It, um, it, um, it moves, it does its own thing. It has a life of its own. I mean, so, you know, it's just like life. You can't plan, oh, I'm gonna do this perfect, this wonderful thing, right. you know, it's just like life. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it tells you what it's gonna do, you know? Right. So, uh, but I really, I really, yeah, I've enjoyed this a uh -huh. lot. I really love the uh, process. And one of the things that I'm- Uh-oh, a little witchy. What happened? Are we still there? Oh, we're here. It says my internet connection is unstable, so oh. you're probably fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, um, I'm sorry, so, if, so, I missed the end of what you were saying, but oh no, but I'm just saying. But all, all I was saying is though, I'm I'm really um I really I enjoy this process, and it also frees me up even further than I already am with you know my figurative work and. And it lets me really just say, uh, let go, let go. And it, and and you only can work so long on it, see, because I will bang away at things so long that it is time for it to go. But yeah. these, you don't, it's a finite amount of time that you have in the studio to do them. So it is what it mm -hmm. is. So, um, so how but, long do these usually take you? These uh, a couple of days. Okay. A couple of days, you know, because usually, um, you know, again, as usual, I hardly ever have a plan about what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but so it kind of just, I start playing around, you know, start making some lines on it and see where that line takes me. And sometimes it's in totally unexpected places. And I'm mm -hmm. surprised. It, you know, like I say, surprise is, a, is the best word I can think. I, you know, yeah. And it's exciting. Yeah, and, and well, I was surprised me. when I first saw this style. I've never seen this before, and it's mm -hmm. really great. And when you explained it, I was just like, "Wait, what? You paint on the paper, but you're making the paper to press together." And yeah, I would love the to paper, see that. Yeah, the paper is the work, and you know, and I will just say this: I, you know, the two things that I'm really proud of with you know the the work that I've done with the handmade paper is um, or artist made paper is that you know one of them a couple of them at yale and their paper and uh prince collection i think two of them mm -hmm. and one of them found its way to the um the paper making museum in uh, in italy uh fabriano who's like known for their paper making they're probably the top paper makers in the world but they specialize in you know papers handmade papers and whatnot so one of my pieces and there's in the museum over there in italy and i'm Wow. I'm really, I'm, I'm geeked on that. I mean, and like I said, that and 50 cent will give me a uh, parking space for 15 minutes, but you know, still <laughs> I, it's cool to me. You know, I, I'm, I'm really tickled by that, you know? 
Yeah. Mm. Be, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Mm, thank you. Um, so I just want to ask one more question before we open up for Q and A. Um, your work is very nostalgic and makes me think of important moments and images throughout Black history, symbols of Black culture, culture, Black communities, Black identity. Can you talk more about your upbringing and how it influences your work? No, absolutely. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, go back to the beginning. It's all about that man in the big crazy hat right there. You know, the big floppy hat. You know, I think that um, a lot of my stories are um, stories of old black men and old black women too, for that fact, you know, I mean, yeah. Negro League, um, you know, um, you know, the Harlem Renaissance, you know, how things used to be, you know, back when we were, you know, like that thing they made when we were kings. You know, I think um, a, 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 an icon that I often use and is for me is the crowns. You know, I think, yeah, we are kings. You know, it, it's almost, I believe, that sometimes, you know, maybe lost in the modern context, you know, in the contemporary world is that, you know, that well-dressed men are supposed to be played out. You know, uh, beautiful women, well-dignified people are uh, played out. They're not. They're never going to be played out. I, I think never. that, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's part of our history and culture is dignity and class and mm -hmm. uh and it's not that you can't have dignity and class with with blue jeans and a hoodie and i've you know kind of morphed into that some too but still i think that uh i think it's very important uh for people not to forget you know mm -hmm. like I say, lest we forget and i don't want us to forget you know that uh yeah we we've come a long way in this country we still have a lot long way to go but there are things that people did to set us up for where we are now, you and I, you know, right now. Yes, uh, I agree. Yeah, um, you know, I think, you know, one of the thing I did with the uh, working man, you know, was uh, the brothers with the, the labels on their shirts. I thought that was, again, something very important to, um, to know that, uh, hey, look, behind every, you know, doctor, PhD, you know, med grad, you know, law student, it's somebody's daddy or granddaddy that sacrificed everything they had to put them through school, okay. you know, and to make sure they got it, you know. Hey, I'm looking here at the barbershop. This, this piece makes me laugh every time I see it. This is like kind of like a digital based thing, but I saw this and I love this, this photo. This is a photographic image with, with pain and other things, but the, to me, what made the whole painting for me is film from good times back there in the back on the jet mag. I just before. noticed that. I was like, <laughs> I feel I like I've seen this so many times and I'm looking at them like, where did that come from? Has that, is that my screen? Is <laughs> no, that's, hey, look, that's <laughs> still a good time. Wow. Hey, wow. look, every, every blue blooded uh, young man in the United States had a bad for Thelma from good times. You know? <laughs> and, and, and when you went to the barbershop, <laughs> When you're on the barbershop, it's always, it's the story stories. I, I you know, there. my father, it, it, one of the things he used to do, he was, a, you cut hair way before I was born, he was a barber. Mm -hmm. And then there was a barber, right? I mean, every, every neighborhood in the black community, the barbershop, the title of this piece is, is uh, OG CNN. You know, it's like everything that's happening, you go ahead in the barbershop. Oh, you go hear every conspiracy absolutely. theory, you go hear every, who was better? Michael Jordan? Uh, uh, <laughs> Everything. Yeah, Everything. that's true. You know, man, <laughs> I guess that that. so true. I just think that that is, I don't think there's a more em, em, emblematic piece, you know, of, of, of we are in the barbershop. And then one of my boys, he's doing a lot of barbershop things uh, in case this slim chance he might be watching Schroeder Cherry. Shout out to my brother Schroeder. Schroeder does all kinds of stuff with barbershop and I see that all the time. And I just nothing that I stick on. I mean, it's like I said, it, this photograph was too great. And I was like, wait a minute. And then I stuck in all the the little the haircuts, the different haircuts. Oh yeah. The Kavada, so you know, the dude, yes. Eleganza, all that stuff. You know? yeah, they're still doing it with the waves and the oh, designs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's right. but Even the sisters, not in they got a piece for the sisters too. Definitely. You know, they, they so the, the barbershop definitely uh symbolizes a place for black stories to be mm -hmm. told and you know it's a it's a com community space 
for us, you know, Absolutely. a place that is for us, by us, and uh, I think a sacred space as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use you say it so eloquently. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, but um, yeah, this and and this piece as well. Um, when you were referring to you know the way black people dress as regal and. It looks like the one on the right is, you know, it reminds me of after church, everyone is dressed in their Sunday's finest and, you know. And it's funny, uh, you know, the title, and, and look, tomorrow, the title of that piece is Sunday's Best. Oh, well, there we go. There you go. See, USCA, yeah. hey, look, see. I was, I, was, I was raised in the church and my mom dragged me to church every Sunday mm -hmm. and we got dolled up and this is exactly what it looks like. People were dolled up even more than us with huge hats with purples oh, yeah. and flowers and you know dress to the nine so um i think it's it's definitely a, a way of saying and and reinforcing our pride and who we are as as african americans especially because of you know our history um no, no. we have to put our best selves forward absolutely because yeah, this was part of the negro league series and you know it was bond storming you know like the you know, the ball players in the foreground and, you know, all of the, you know, the, the, the brothers and the, and the serious, the fine sister in the background, dressed to the T, bam, you know, mm -hmm. put together the umbrella, everything, you know? Yeah. And I still love to see that. Thank you know, you. that's yeah. not, that's not played out. It's not, and I hope, I definitely hope to see more of this, you know, in the future, going back to normalcy. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you. Yeah, uh, that, would, that would be wonderful. It would be wonderful. Yes. So that's all the questions that I have for you. So we're going to open up the chat for Q and A, and I'm okay. going to stop the screen share and see what kind of questions that we have. Um. So we have a question, and uh, Ama, she wants to know regarding black portraiture and its significance to Black culture, can you speak more about the importance of Black portraiture and how it speaks to the power of images? Well, I think that's, um, okay, let me see, that's a pretty loaded question. Okay, and I'll just say this. One of the things that I think historically in art, period, no matter whose art, was the portrait. I think that the pieces that I recall as a kid and all, you know, going to museums, museum, so to see the Mona Lisa, to see all the any number of portraits that are out, the presidential portraits. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's a viewpoint into how you see yourself and how you want to be portrayed and how do you want to set your own narrative mm -hmm. to who you are. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about, you know, Black portraiture, I think it's the same with every portrait okay i'll tell you how sometime when if Chappelle say we're well, keeping it real goes wrong one of the things that one of the things, one of the things that, that, that uh i'll never forget you know that you talk about the, the, uh, reference and influence was the, the the library and where i grew up in west palm beach it had this it was a big old grand not library i'm sorry post office the post office and it had to wrap around thing and you'd walk all around it and in in the cage I guess there was a a big mural painted around there and I don't know if people up here or any place else but Florida know the legend of the barefoot mailman you know do you know anything about the barefoot mailman no no okay well the barefoot mailman well it was it was just a guy the, the mailman in Florida marching through the marshes the swamps with his ro pants rolled up and he's carting the mail, you know, hail sleets, no. And, no. and in this post office, okay, Florida Seminoles, they had Osceola. Osceola was the king of the, the Seminoles. And he was, they had him holding this white man's head in his hand and he's up on the hill. And I guess that was supposed to show Osceola as this savage, this horrible person. I was like, that's my dude. I say I was like holding it down. They're like, not this time, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, what that did for me was I, you know, depending on your view, your vision, whatever you see or what you 
get to um, what you want to feel about a thing is what portraits do. And I think that when you talk about black, you know, the, 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 the idea of blackness in the portrait, I do think that we, um, I would say me, I, I'll speak for myself only, that I've tended to paint my sons, you know, my grandfathers and my friends, my people. And it is uh, what I think in the litany of, you know, where my work, who knows where it, it is or where, you know, but where it ends up, you will have a history of kind of how I think, mm -hmm. you know, from, I think the, 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 um, the titles, I mean, some of them, the last angry black man, some of the ones that come to my head, uh, they built a nation, endangered species, uh, losing my religion. I think they, you know, they, there's a story behind every one of these portraits that mm -hmm. has, um, that has a specific meaning for a specific thing. So I would say that, you know, um, yeah, the importance of the black portrait, yeah, I do believe, because so, so often, just like TV back in the 60s and 70s, right. when um, What's the Face came out, you know, um, was that Diana, when you could see a black person on TV? On TV? Yeah, it was you know, that was radical. a big thing. Yeah, yes. I mean, Fred Sanford, Absolutely. you know, anything, anybody, black, even Jimmy Walker, Dino Mike, you know, mm -hmm. see every All white person from here to Italy figure, Dino Mike, every black man was there, right? You know, so I just say that in, in our art, it was time for us to show us who we are, who, what I feel about me not about what somebody else is or what you think of me. So I, I think that's my own personal story. I mean, what, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that goes probably for many other of my brethren, you know, and sisters out here who are, are, are painting a portrait. And I love the, and, and by the way, the portrait is my favorite. I still consider myself a portrait painter, no I matter so what. Too. Yeah, I'm yes, portrait. I, I, love, I have to agree. Yeah. Because everything else is just an excuse to put paint on a canvas, you know, but the portrait, I think, is what really, um, I think you can get a spirit in a portrait, no matter how you do it, you know, whether it's, it, it's coming from you and then it's very personal conversation with you and this likeness or whatever. And it's your it narrative, right? I, I, your narrative, you. right. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and your story. Yeah, and I think that's very important as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, did I answer the question? I, yes, you did. I agree, yeah. and yeah. I and I definitely agree. Um, so so I especially like I especially appreciate my Osceola story. <laughs> Man, for me, oh, that was, that was... <laughs> you brought us. You brought the memories back. Oh, Shared absolutely. Them with yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do we have any more questions? That was the only question. I mean, I see my my home girl on here, Rosalind Bird, Roz, from from right across the track. I'm looking at that face down here at the bottom. Down here, that's my, my home girl. What's up, Roz? <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Rosalind. Shout out to Roz and Miss Bird. Um, I have another question. Are you working on any upcoming shows or new body of work? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was someplace else. Uh, actually, I was telling you today, I'm doing this thing with uh, Tim Davis uh, at International Vision. He's here. Shout out yeah. to Tim Davis. Hey. Yeah, Tim Davis. <laughs> right. Brother Davis. Yeah. So uh, if he's out here well, watching, if he's on. But you know, but yeah, there's a show, and I think the title of it is In Our Skin. Mm. And, and I've got portraits in there. I've got probably six portraits, okay. you know, and each one of them of a different way. And I'm also, let me see what else is going on. I, I don't even know. Uh, it, there's another one that I'm putting together, my black male show that I'm figuring out mm -hmm. where that's going, going to go. But, uh, and then I'm in some other group shows, but I don't, you know, who knows? Great. That's good to know. We will keep a look on the lookout for your future projects and exhibitions. Um, they're always so exciting. Oh, hold on, wait, and then there's, a, there's another show. I about to say, I, I didn't have, I didn't write my notes, but see, there's another one. I don't know whether it's gonna be um, 
a virtual show at this point or if it'll be something else but uh mm -hmm. with the driscoll center they're having a show mm -hmm. i guess in the spring of a, a show with him and his students oh at, wow. At driscoll center. yeah wow. I'm, I'm very wow. proud to now see this brings up a, a, another trick thing see my wife always gets mad at me she said well how come you could she asked me a question and then what did somebody say i see it takes me a long my recall is a little slow i'm like because there's some other stuff going on too and i just just not like plugged in <laughs> the right. forefront right hey look, <laughs> hey look i think it's <laughs> but no yeah but yeah but i'm i've been trying to stay stay busy the best i can and i'm working you know and the show is just kind of fine you know they find a way to and work finds its way in things and you know and right now the whole world is kind of you know not much going on right things are happening on zoom though yeah oh yeah exactly yeah i'm <laughs> zoomed out yeah i've been zooming i've been running my mouth matter of fact i'm gonna show in chicago now yeah i forgot about that that's, but that started about maybe a month and a half ago at uh gallery to show it up in chicago okay um it was a group show a lot, of, you know, a lot of group things, you know, so, yeah. Let me see what, oh, oh Tim yeah, Davis, I see, yeah, I see, Tim uh, Davis is saying Tim that Davis. the story, story of our skin opens next week, so. Everyone so Tim, I hope you heard me, yeah, okay. me and Tamara give you the, give you the, give you the shout out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's my man, uh, what do you call it? Well, um, well, if anyone has any more questions, um, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Preston. Okay, that was another our, one. Oh, hold on, tomorrow I see one another question here. Somebody said you have oh. a preference for colors. Oh, where did you see that? Oh, it's down here somewhere. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so colors. I don't see it, but you see it. Go oh, ahead. Well, maybe that's <laughs> privately, yeah. Um, maybe so. Okay, yeah. So private means nobody can see it but you, right? Is that what? See, I don't. I'm still new to this. I don't really know how this goes. But anyway, but yeah, so Robert Frierson, uh, my dude, he asked me a colors. Yeah, absolutely. I like red. Red to me is always mm -hmm. blood. That's the, the, the that's the money. You know, mm -hmm. for me, red is it's 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 um the pain is not complete without red in it for me. You know, because that's like the blood life, the, okay. the heartbeat. Mm. Hey Roz, is that drum beat from Roosevelt? You know, it's uh, you know, it's 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 that's that's what makes it all go for me. You know, and then I like blues too. I like blues. You know, and uh, you know, I never use black because I, I think that you know the black. I just didn't get taught to paint with black paint. Yes, so. there's other complex colors that you can make before you use black. Just mix it in with other colors and. I agree. You understand everything. I've and had like this. Said, I've, I've had this intellectual conversation with my daughter, and she's like, uh -huh. "But black is the primary color." It's like, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't, you know, get my <laughs> message across. So I just have to let it go. She can do no I've wrong. I tried well, to tell her though. Yeah. Well, look, whatever she says, she's right. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she gets to be right all the time for You're me. Biased. That's, that's You're my biased. girl. <laughs> yeah, she can. She can do whatever she wants to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but no black and and red. Okay. Yeah, red and blue. Okay. Red. And you know, but every color. I mean, it's just, you know, uh, Florida is just a tropical place. You know, so it's uh, and grew up with color, mangoes and mm -hmm. do they have mangoes in California. No, we have avocados and uh. and lemons, but they're amazing lemons. You can't. They're just. They have a flavor that you just can't get from the grocery store. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. But nothing tops <laughs> a mango, especially when the ones that get the string when you get a string in your. Feet. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So That's absolutely. So uh -huh. But um, no, it is um, it's um, uh, they, they, this has really been wonderful though, you know, and I and I and you really hope. The one thing I think as an artist that you do hope that people will actually listen to you dead in and kind of understand it's more than just a pretty picture or not so pretty picture, there's something behind the picture. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another thing, there's another motivation and 
driving force of why you're doing what you're doing. And, uh, you know, hey, yeah, like anything else, you hope it resonates with somebody other than yourself, where you just having your own inside personal right. joke with yourself, which don't get me wrong, which it happens to be sometimes far too much that it's just all about, yeah, because I understand there's some stuff that I do that people are like, really? Okay. Sometimes it's about your personal journey. Mm -hmm. It really is. That's right. Hey, is. You know, some anybody people understand. Who... And even if someone just understands like a small part of it, it's still like significant, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think so too. And it's not easy, but it's not supposed to be easy, I guess, you know. Nothing in life. <laughs> absolutely. But you, know, but, but you are doing amazing work tomorrow. And keep up. As are you? Yes. Keep up you the good too. work. Back and I really you. do hope people can get out. Maybe if they're local to come out this weekend and see, see this because I love that gallery. I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful environment. Stone Tower yeah. Gallery. Yeah. Gorgeous, it's just, intimate space. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel and like I the colors that in your portrait completely pop off the walls, and it's really nice. Yeah, I will. Gorgeous I, exhibition. I, I will. I will humbly agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, but it, yeah, I enjoyed that quite a bit, and I'm glad that I did not follow my other instinct and say, "Man, I don't feel like doing this." Uh. No, I'm always gonna push you, so <laughs> you can't tell me no. Uh, 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 hey, look, you know, you can always push. You know, I need somebody to push. You know, and yeah. uh, uh, it's. It's, 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 it's a solitary world that the man lives in. So, you know, we have to just keep on. I need all of the, every, uh, keep going, every bit of encouragement and, you know, with uh, that we all can get, we all do right now. I think the whole world needs a hug, you yes. know. And it's Virtual just, hugs it's, to everyone who is here and yeah. watching. We're sending absolutely. you all the love and, and energy, you know. It's an important time to stay connected. Absolutely. Make and sure people normal. know they're not alone. So you know, this is we the, see new, you. the new and the new normal. Yes. Here we go. Yes. Right here. But I'm gonna keep on rocking and rolling. Absolutely. Doing the best I can. And you know, hope that a few people I can drag a few people along the way, you know. And um uh, yeah. you know, thank you everybody for um uh, for coming out and uh thank joining, you. joining yeah. us this evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you haven't seen the show, please go by this weekend, Saturday or Sunday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. The galleries are open. This is the last weekend to see um, Respite, uh, Preston's solo show. It's gorgeous. Please go see it. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Preston. Thank you. I, I hope to do more shows with you in the future. So excited. Well, I'm always excited about you know, your work. We could talk about your I work for, you. for hours. <laughs> but I everyone has to go. Always, I'm sure people want to eat. <laughs> all right, yeah. Well, I still got that one for you, too, with your name on it. Please. You know, I know you know which one. Don't sell my piece. So, yeah. I, I, I know. It's there for you. Absolutely. Now, but this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good night, everyone. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. <laughs>